Angles and parallel lines. We have learned that when lines are cut by a transversal, we have some angle relationships between the two lines. Now we're going to learn about when these lines are parallel and being cut by a transversal. In the picture, the two black lines with the red arrows on them are parallel lines. They are being cut by the transversal, which goes vertically through the picture. If you remember from our previous lesson, angle 1 and angle 5 would be called corresponding. Now, that was fine, but we couldn't really tell a whole lot about them other than what their names were. But now that we have parallel lines, we have some special relationships. The relationship is that the lines are, or excuse me, the angles are congruent. So angle 1 and angle 5 are congruent. Angle 2 and angle 6 are congruent. Angle 3 and angle 7, and angle 4, and angle 8. It's the same corresponding angles we learned in the previous lesson, but now we know that they are congruent because the lines were parallel. If lines are parallel, then the alternate interior angles. If you remember from our last lesson, 3 and 6 would be alternate interior angles, and 4 and 8 would also be alternate interior angles. When the lines are parallel, these angles are now congruent. Next we have the alternate exterior angles. They will also be congruent. All of these relationships are the exact same relationships we've talked about before. The difference now is we are talking about parallel lines. That's a very, very important thing to understand because if the lines weren't parallel, these relationships of congruency would not exist. Angle 1 and angle 8 are congruent. Angle 7 and angle 2 are congruent. Next we have our consecutive interior. That would be angles 4 and 6 or angles 3 and 5. Those angles will be supplementary. If you remember, supplementary angles add up to 180 degrees. That means angle 4 and angle 6 when we add those two angles together we will get 180 degrees all of the previous examples which were alternate exterior alternate interior and corresponding were all congruent now we are on to consecutive interior angles and these are supplementary Next, let's try and put some of this into practice to solve a question. The question we have is, what is the measurement of angle W? The angle W we're looking for is this angle right here. In order to solve this, we're going to need to draw something in that we've never had to draw yet, and that is an auxiliary line. Now that I've drawn in the auxiliary line, we can use some of the properties that we just learned to solve this question. First, if we look at this angle right here, angle 41, if you pair that up with this angle right here, we have a pair of alternate interior angles. The one is on the inside of the blue line, which is parallel to the black line in the bottom. So this is on the inside, and this is on the inside of those two lines, and they are alternating. So we would say this one is 41 degrees, because alternate interior angles are congruent. Next, we need to find the measurement of this angle. Well, again, if we use our auxiliary line, and this angle that I put the blue dot in, along with the angle that is marked by 120 degrees, those two angles are definitely not congruent, but they are consecutive interior angles. What we know about consecutive interior angles is that they are supplementary, meaning they add up to 180 degrees. Therefore, if this angle is sub, sub, excuse me, 120, then this angle down here has to be 60. Now we can see that angle W his measurement is 101 degrees. We add 60 plus 41 
to get 101. Now if I move this parts of the picture that are not needed, we can see that that looks like it's reasonable to think that that is 101 degrees. It's definitely more than 90 and completely possible that it's 101. I believe our answer is correct. So we found the measurement of angle W. Now take a moment and find the measurement of all eight angles. One of them has been given to you. Your job is to find the measurement of the other eight. We're going to use a lot of the properties that we've talked about so far, but some of them are actually from chapters two and one. The first property I'm going to use is vertical angles. The angle here that has 123 degrees it marked on it is a vertical angle to the one right above it, so that must also be 123 degrees. We have our first measurement. Next, the measurement or the angle that I just marked with red is a linear pair to the angle that is 123 degrees. Therefore, they should add up to 180. That means this angle should be 57 degrees. Now we're going to go back to vertical angles and use that fact that this is 57. The one that is a vertical pair to it would also be 57. That we could actually have done with prior knowledge. Now we're going to use our new information. The first and very, very most important piece, if you didn't check this ahead of time, was to notice that the top line and the bottom line are parallel to each other. Since we know that, we can use the parts about corresponding alternate interior, alternate exterior, and consecutive. I prefer to use the corresponding angles. Therefore, I know that angle 123 corresponds to this angle right up here. That means if this angle is 123, then the angle on the top is 123. If the angle on the bottom right is 123, then the top is 123. We also could have used vertical angles once we had either of those. Lastly, we have 57 and 57. We now have the measurement of all eight angles. Find the measures of all eight angles in this picture. This one's a little bit more challenging because we're given an algebraic expression. What we need to first do is figure out what types of angles these are. They're not alternate interior. They're not alternate uh, or corresponding. They're not consecutive. They actually are alternate exterior, which we have not listed yet in any of our descriptions. But just like the alternate interiors, the alternate exteriors would be congruent. Therefore, we could say 8x minus 60 will equal 4x plus 20. Now it's your turn. Go ahead and solve that equation. What you should have done is add 60. and minus the 4x. We will get 4x equals 80, which means x equals 20. We're not done. The question asks us to find the measures of all eight angles. We need to put that 20 back in. 8 times 20 is 160 minus 60 means this angle is 100. Using that, how many more 100s could you put on your picture? And why? Well, the first one we can do is the one that is vertical to it. That has to be 100. The second one I would use is the fact that this angle right here is corresponding. So that is also 100. And then we have the alternate exterior pair to it, which will also be 100. We've just put four of our measurements on the picture. Now we're going to have to use another piece of information. If any of these angles are 100, 
an angle that is a linear pair to it would make it 180. Therefore, I will call this 80 degrees. The reason I can say that is because these two angles are a linear pair, meaning they have to add up to 180. Now I can use vertical angles to say this is 80, corresponding to say this is 80, and vertical to say this is 80. Here's one for you to try. Make sure you pause and solve this question and then come back to check your answer. What we could use on this one is the fact that they are consecutive interior, meaning they're going to add up to 180 degrees. 3x and 5x make 8x. Move the 36 to the other side. and you get 8x equals to 216. Next, divide by 8. And finally, you have x equal to 27. Now we need to substitute that back in. The easiest place to substitute it back in would be to the 5x angle. 5 times 27 would be 135 degrees. Now we can use the fact that that's vertical with this one, which is also make it 135, and they are corresponding to this one or alternate interior to this one. Half done. Now we're going to use a linear pair. That means this one would have to be 45 degrees. This is vertical, and then we have our corresponding other two angles. And now we have all four angles in our picture. This completes the lesson on angles and parallel lines. Make sure to ask any questions you have when you come to class.